What up, world? It's your boy, BA for Real 100, and welcome to Get Your Bars Up Media. Salute, salute, salute. Uh, so, we back up in this thing. Yes, I do got my wine. We on that grown man. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful queens out there that's representing and being great moms and uh, holding it down. You feel me? Holding it, holding it down for us. You feel me? For us, our people, period, as in humanity. But anyways, um... Welcome to another episode of uh, talking about uh, the the Bulls, the Last Dance, episode seven and eight. Now this episode right here was fire. It was fire. Uh, one thing that was super crazy to me was seeing Michael Jordan at an emotional, like being emotional. My guy teared up a couple times in here. It's crazy. It's crazy. But everything uh, in, in episode seven, it starts off with uh, talking about Jordan, uh, Jordan's dad. You feel me? How much his dad meant to him, etc. And then actually going through the whole thing where uh, Jordan is already talking about retiring before his pops even uh, passes away. But then his pop passes, his, his dad passes away by getting robbed, shot, whatever, falling asleep in his car and all that. It's crazy. Ah! It's crazy to be a superstar and stuff like that. It's just all in a tabloid. It's hard to run away from that. You feel me? It's hard. It's hard. But we are talking. To, we are definitely talking about the goat, though. But uh, his dad passes, and um, he steps away from the game. You feel me? Back in 1993, and when he steps away from the uh, away from the game, it transitions and, talk, and talks about his uh, him playing baseball. You feel me? And how did he? Uh, how did he how did he make it to a double a team <sighs> and he and he's not he wasn't that good <sighs> it's called being the goat of basketball you feel me and then the owner of your basketball team that you played on owns the baseball organization that you're a part of that's a big yeah 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 all of that ah, it doesn't say it doesn't say all of that in there but that's definitely what it was but mj um they say that he actually was a pretty good uh he was actually a pretty good ba baseball player um, of course, when he started to fail or he started to have horrible moments, the, um, they magnified it or whatnot, say he didn't belong in baseball. But year uh, a year goes by and B.J. Armstrong, yes, the late great B.J. Armstrong, yes, uh, he actually calls up, uh, he actually calls up MJ or MJ calls him up and was like, yo, let's, let's go hoop. So they go hoop. Then Jordan starts to get back into his mode, y'all. He starts to get back into his mode, which I did like. Um, the, inter the interesting part about the beginning of uh, this whole documentary was I didn't know that it was a big rumor about Jordan being suspended from basketball due to him having so-called gambling issues and and uh, his and uh, his pops dying, and that, that's probably why his pops died. But it's it. with that happening, it was bringing heat to the NBA. Didn't think about it in that way, but it does make it does kind of make sense. Even though David Stern, R.I.P. David Stern, um, he came out and they had a video of him talking about it. And he said, Nah, no, not MJ. That was his money maker. Why would you suspend your money maker, right? But uh, anyways. They start highlighting a guy by the name of Tony Kukoc. I didn't know Tony Kukoc was clutch. Ah, I didn't know he was clutch like that. I guess he was Mr. Clutch when MJ went away. The Bulls did well, and a lot of uh, in that particular season, which was Tony Kukoc's uh, rookie season, the '93 '94 season, um, Tony, uh, Kukoc hit a whole bunch of uh, uh, of game winners. That's crazy. That's crazy. Kukoc, Kukoc. Yeah, I see you. I see you, sir. Ah. I see, I see you, fella. I see you. Did you think? Had no idea. New Kukoc was a real good player because I remembered him from the 95, 96 season when they went that second three-peat. You feel me? I remember him being a great role player, but I didn't know he had it like that. But uh, transitioning to since Kukoc was doing all of this and all of that, and he was hitting these game winners, they ended up playing the, um, the New York Knicks. And this is 93, 94. The New York Knicks actually went to the championship that year. But uh, they end up playing the Knicks, and when they play the Knicks, uh, the game is super duper close. It's an elimination game, and Phil Jackson calls up a play for Tony Kukoc, not Scottie Pippen, which had an amazing year that year. And uh, Scotty uh, Scotty Pippen got mad and was like, "I ain't going in the game." So everybody on the team was like, "Man, why you quitting on us? Why you quitting on us, Scotty?" But Kukoc goes in when Scotty refused to, and Kukoc hit a game winner. 
Classic. That was a classic moment right there. I was feeling that moment. I was like, what? No, Kukos, don't shoot that. Ah! Not, not really remembering, not really understanding that. He hit about seven or eight that season. It's crazy, right? Yeah, game winners. Ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. You can check the stats. You can go back to 93, 94, Chicago Bulls, because they actually had a really good season that year, but they fell short because Patrick Ewing them wasn't handling it. They, they, they weren't going to have none of that. None of that. But anyways, uh, transitioning to MJ coming back to the game. Yes. Yes. He was him and, him and his um, his uh, agent or whatever, or his publicist, should I say, uh, was trying to figure out uh, what, what was great. What was great to go into the newspaper and what was going to be the term of him coming back. And he, get, he, he let Mike. Uh, pick something to say, and Mike just put it in two words. I'm back. I'm back like four, five. Ah! So, what makes this super, super significant to me with this comeback, even though they lost to Penny and Shaq later down in Horace Grant, they lost to them later down the line. Um, MJ came back after missing a year and a half of basketball, because this was like, this was in March. This was like March when he came back anyway. Um, this dude came back and went to Madison Square Garden and scored 55 on on the same team that uh that same Patrick Ewing tough uh, New York team. That's crazy. That's crazy. He came and scored 45, and then he came back and hit a game winner against Atlanta as the number four five. It's crazy. It's crazy. But uh, Jordan, it showed uh, it showed definitely uh, during this stretch of time in that 94 95 season, uh, Jordan definitely. Wasn't uh he wasn't in game time shape. He wasn't in his normal typical shape, and it definitely showed because when, like I said previous, they went and uh, they ended up meeting the Orlando Magic and ended up losing that series just because Nick Anderson and uh, Anthony Hardaway put it on him, put it on him. Shaq had Shaq played well too, but those two in particular did a number on MJ. MJ didn't have it. He just didn't have it that series. No, no, which. Gets us to the point. Gets us to uh, the summer. The summer of 95. The Houston Rockets had just won the championship. Jordan got sent home early. And then a movie called Space Jam is, is actually being made. So what does MJ do? Since he's the leading character, the star of the movie, he says, yo, y'all got to build me a gym. That's crazy. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of this. We just lost. I just got humiliated from the young, the, the young Orlando, Orlando Magic team. Humiliated. Gotta work on my game because we're gonna get them boys next season. And what happens? He starts shooting the space jam. The patent leather 11 showing all through the episode. Yes. Yes. My favorite pair, by the way. Definitely. Definitely my favorite pair. But um he ends up uh he ends up scrimmaging and everything. He starts he starts to get in tip top shape early, way before the season starts. And then it gets into that 95-96 season. And this is when Dennis Rodman uh shows up and a couple other uh players, Luke Longley, etc., show up to help Judd Bushler, all these role players come and they, they come to help him. And uh, he ends up uh at the beginning of the training camp, he punches, he punches Steve Kerr in the face. <laughs> Yeah, I said it. He punches Steve Kerr in the face. What? Steve Kerr, what? You got punched in the face by MJ, the GOAT. But Steve Kerr was like, it's cool. It was the GOAT that did it. Boys, stop. Ah! But with that being said, uh, they ended up making up and going into that 95-96 season. Um, the Bulls went 72-10. and 10. They finished the season going 72-10. and 10. And with that being said, they faced against, uh, in the finals that year, they faced the Supersonics. With Gary Payton, um, uh, Gary Payton and Sean Kemp and, and Detlef Shrimp and them boys, and they went ham. They went ham. They said the glove said he slowed down Jordan two games. Jordan was looking on his little uh, his, his little um, his little iPad or whatnot, looking at Gary Payton talk his ish, and Jordan started laughing. Ah, he was like, no, I had some things on my mind. What? Anyways, the Bulls end up having the greatest season ever. They win their fourth championship, and uh, yeah, man, that was pretty much that was pretty much what I got from the uh, the, the episode, man. I think it was a dope episode. I actually, 
actually uh, was very, very entertained. I'm excited to see this next episode where Reggie Miller is now talking this ish from the 97-98 season. Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah. All of that. I can't wait to see what uh, um, what they talk about. And I want to see. Uh, I can't wait to hear something like the inside scoop that I never knew as a child growing up uh, watching MJ. But anyways, I got to get up out of here. This is your boy, BA For Real 100. This is Get Your Bars Up Media. If this is your first time here, click that subscribe button. You rock with me. I rock with you. And if you're out there hating just because you think I'm a new guy and you just not stumbling upon my page and I've been doing this for a minute, <laughs> then all I can truly say is thank you for coming. And get your bars up. Salute. Subscribe. All of that good stuff. Y'all tell me what y'all think about these two episodes. Me personally, I think they were fire. But anyways, happy Mother's Day, y'all. Salute.